This week on Predator Pursuit, we're in deep South Texas hunting the legendary Callahan Ranch. Stay tuned. Pursuit is presented by NightHuntingDepot.com, your one-stop shop for all your night hunting needs. Hey guys, I'm Jeff Thomason and welcome to this week's episode of Predator Pursuit. This week we're going to be down in the famous South Texas brush country hunting the legendary Callahan Ranch. Now this ranch is famous for its giant whitetail and javelina hunting, but this week we're going to be hunting with the ranch manager Jeff Fisher and a good friend Jim Hodge, but we're going to be chasing predators. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a great show. All right, we're rolling in here to San Antonio. We're about to meet up with Jim here at the gas station. We're gonna meet up with him and then we're headed down to Ensenal. And we're gonna get after him. It's only 2.20 or so, so we're gonna, we're gonna have a little time this evening. Go sight in our guns and get right after him. I'm ready. I've been uh, hunting bobcats for about 30 years. It's just one of those things that has always eluded me uh, about 30 years. Uh, look forward to see if we can't score one this weekend. Yeah, I met Jim a year ago, and uh, he's been trying to kill a bobcat for the last 30 years. And yeah, lately I've been seeing a whole lot of bobcats, so I thought of Jim, so I gave him a call and told him he needs to come on down. Hopefully we can get out here right now and kill us a bobcat. Well, we made it to the ranch, we got settled in, and we had just enough time to go out and make one daytime setup. We called in a coyote, but he came in directly behind us and didn't give us a shot. But you know what? Night time's just around the corner. It's time to fire up the lights and get ready for some night hunting. Well, you know it's gonna be a good night when the first coyote you call in comes all the way into shotgun range. First night hunt of, of the whole trip, and we got one down. If it keeps up like that, we're gonna be in good shape. Let's load him up, man. get on to the next one. Hey, I shoot him. Hey, I shoot him. Nice job, man. Good shot. He just smacked him on the run with a rifle. I was fixing to, I was fixing to get him with a shotgun and pop. <laughs> I'm glad you shot when you did, because he was about to get off the road and disappear forever into that thick stuff. There he is, right there. Second one of the night. I told you, I was like, we'll start it on about medium power, and then 
when they're at 20 yards, it's even low powers too much. Yep. That sucker, man, got a big cactus needle stuck in his. I don't see how these things do it out here. Oh my God, I felt bad for him just looking at it. I'm telling you, I don't know. You folks at home, everything down here in South Texas, cactus, mesquites, you can't even walk in this stuff, but they thrive down here. Yeah. They love it. Well, awesome, man. I'm glad you got one. Now we're, the, the saga continues for, for your cat. It'll happen. here a minute ago and we got a real long sendero cut through this real thick brush and we've been calling all morning around these open tanks where they've been clearing and we hadn't had any luck we're gonna change our strategy see if we can't get something to come out of this thick stuff but if they come in we ought to get good footage if he comes down the road I agree I agree let's give it a shot we don't have much to lose all right let's, let's try That was awesome. We've been calling for three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope you got that sucker. It looks like hair blowing across there. I hope it is. He he popped out just right there. I mean, not 75 yards and came running right to the decoy. I mean, I hope you got him, man. What? Yes. Lots of blood. We found. I found a giant pair of sheds and you found an arrowhead. We knew something good was gonna happen. Here's where he came across. There's Look at all blood. that blood, holy cow. Yeah. Here he is, right, yes, right there. There he is, see his belly? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what we've been waiting for. Good job, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, first cat, man. Yes. First cat. Told you. 30 years. 30 Told years, you. man. 30 year rut. 30 years, that is awesome. If you said, let's go to New Zealand, and hunt red stag, or you go bobcat hunting in South Texas, I'd rather go bobcat hunting in South Texas. I'm right there with you, man. I can see the spots from here. He's gonna be awesome. Dude, look at the spot, spots. That is awesome. So dark, that's what I noticed when he came out. It's real dark colored. Congratulations, golly. Thank you. Thank you. It took everything I had in me not to shoot that cat. <laughs> Cause he, he had us busted. He was looking at us and I was like, oh no. I was like, I was waiting on the shot any second. And I didn't know you were looking the other way. Last time I, I saw a bobcat, it was here on this ranch, uh, just shy of a year ago. Um, I was with a good friend of mine and uh, we were exclusively hunting bobcats and hunting bobcats for me to shoot my first bobcat. And, as we were sitting in our stand, I was looking one direction and he was looking another. He's trying to get my attention and calls in a bobcat and I was turned the wrong way. So I came back out here to see if we can get one and you guys, I can't thank you enough. Uh, it's, it's, it's an emotional thing for me, the fact that I've been waiting for this thing for almost 30 years. So I'm real excited about it.
You know, that was just an amazing shot. Bobcat comes out, gets a good clean shot on him. Only runs maybe 15 yards into the brush, piled up, good blood, good clean kill. He's been a really good friend of mine. Seems like we've known each other forever and uh, so proud of him. Man, I'm so glad I got to be there with Jim when he took his first cat. That's definitely an experience neither one of us will ever forget. Now don't go anywhere because after the break, Jeff and I are going back out chasing more predators. Well, on this next stand, Dustin had climbed up in the rack and he was shining the light around doing just like we always do, checking for deer and cattle. And I was still down on the ground shuttling guns and, and getting the call set up. And Dustin got my attention and I looked over and sure enough, we had a group of hogs working right towards the truck. Well, I knew I didn't have enough time to get back up in the rack and get settled in, so I just grabbed the closest thing to me and it just happened to be a 22 loaded up with tracer rounds. I don't know if we'll find him or not, man. The good thing is there's no grass out here. If he's laying here, we'll find him. There he is. I'll be dang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, he's no monster, but what, what can you ask for when you're shooting him with a 22? <laughs> Check that out. <laughs> That's my first tracer kill. <laughs> man, that is a... Perfect eating hog. Yeah, there's the bullet right there. Yep. Right there. How cool is that? And whenever I was looking at them, I thought they were like football size, you know? They're just the opposite of bucks. Really? You know, when you walk up to a buck, it shrinks. When you walk up to a pig, it gets fatter. I'm okay with that, man. That is cool. That's, that's not going to be my last tracer kill, I guarantee it. That was too cool. First pig with a 22. First pig with a tracer. First anything with a tracer. Good job, man. Thanks. Nice. That we, was a good one. We, we called him in, man. It was only four minutes when he showed up. And you busted him, so we kept calling. Nothing else showed up. But you were just telling me that's your first called coyote. Yep, that's my first called coyote. That's unreal. This guy lives down here in South Texas where they're everywhere. We just heard 40 howling, probably. Yeah. And you never hadn't called one up. That's awesome. Yeah. So you got your first called coyote. Jim got his first cat. It's great, man. It's been a great Couldn't ask trip. For better. It's awesome. There he is, man. Number number one, number one for you. I don't know how hey. many of these I've killed, but never called them. You know what? Look awesome. at this. He's a two pointer too. He's got a white tip on his tail. That makes him worth two. Really? Yeah. Awesome. That's Thank even you. better. I appreciate it. Number one, first first called coyote for him. Shot him with a tracer on video. Pretty awesome, man. You know, it's amazing how many I've killed, but this is so neat calling them like this. Oh, yeah, it's, it's so much fun. It's probably one of the most addictive things you can do, especially yeah. especially in the hunting world. Well, that's awesome, man. Congratulations. It's only 11 o'clock. Let's keep going. We got some more getting today. Stacking day. and stacking. <laughs> this segment of Predator Pursuit is brought to you by NightHuntingDepot.com, your one-stop shop for all your night hunting needs.
Man, are you kidding me? How many were there? I don't know. The only reason we stopped and called here, we called back over there, called in a couple, drove around, and as we were driving, I had my window rolled down, and they started howling not 500 yards from us. I mean, a bunch of them. Yeah. So we set up, started calling, called one end downwind, it busted us, turned around, had three more standing right here, and then they all kind of scattered, never gave us a shot, kept calling, and this one came in. He had a limp. I don't know what yeah. something's wrong with him, I'm not sure what, but man, they are moving and there's a bunch of them up here. Golly. All right, let's go get him. Oh yeah, that's a big male. That's probably the biggest coyote we've shot. That's a big one. He came in without a worry too, just mm -hmm. straight. But I told Dustin, I said, man, when he stops, we'd, we pushed our luck enough. I think that was that was the fifth coyote on this stand to come in now. It seems like every time we hear them howling, we drive that way. That's it. And there they are. We heard them. I said, man, they're probably a mile away, just guessing, you know, best guess. We drive a mile and try to get as close as we can. It's worked every time. Awesome, man. All right, let's load them up and roll with it. Well, it's been a really busy year this year filming for the show, and my cameraman Dustin, he hadn't had much time to go out and do any hunting for himself, and he had also mentioned that he'd never taken a javelina before, so that last morning we decided we were going to take some time and see if we couldn't put him on one. Yeah, buddy. First javelina. I've shot hogs, but never a javelina. And I just dropped that sucker in his tracks. That was awesome. And this ranch is loaded with javelinas. And the rancher, he said, you know what? We've got so many javelinas. You never took one before. If you get a chance, I'll let you take one. And I just did. He got to watch, too. He right over there. That's awesome, man. We've been hunting the uh, Callahan Ranch here for the past couple of days. We've got a lot of coyotes, and uh, today's our last day. We had a few minutes where we had to go head out, spotted these javelinas, parked down the road a ways, made a good little stock on them, got into about 100, 120 yards or so, and uh, dropped the hammer on him, man. That was a good time. Well, it's been a risen. Hello. Cameraman, good seeing ya. 